Isn't it fun to hear them all rewind all at once? Well, the other thing is done. Here we are. There are 50 nice tapes. Well, counting those eight over there. To send out to 50 nice TV stations. All with messages to you. To help you be happy. Working hard on it. We are working very, very hard on it. All good messages to you. Standing up for rights. Not backing down. Telling the truth about the secret societies, the elite, the globalists, the controllers, the insiders, who are out to take everything they can away from you. Everything. They want everything. They want you to be nothing. And your happiness lessons. Now all that's left is to wrap. Cheer up time, folks. Time to cheer up. 44 degrees on January the 11th. Sun is so strong we don't dare lift the camera. Imagine that. It must be the January thaw. Look at the woods. So much of the snow gone. Cheer up time. And the plants are happy. This is the first sunshine they've seen in four or five days. Cheer up time. 30 videotapes are wrapped to go to 30 TV stations to cheer up people. And this is all that's left. Just those. And we have cheerful envelopes because we ran out of envelopes and it was easier, I guess, to make our own than it was to go way down to Staples and get two boxes of 9x12s. And this kitty is just full of spring fever. Yeah, January thaw fever. Cheer up time, folks. Paul is the image of goodwill. That's where his jacket came from, his tie and his shirt. And that's where Mary Ramage got these hats. The purple one and the green one. Folks, if you're in goodwill at Salvation Army and you see some Glendoras, Glendora hats, will you get them, please? And send me the hat and the receipt. And if you're talking to somebody, remember, the mind cannot absorb more than the seat can endure. Bill is a salesman and he says he's been on the road for three months. And somebody who didn't know he was a salesman said, he must be a slow driver. It's so hot, folks, we can sit out here on the back stoop, the stoop to the south. Stand up, stand up for oneness. Stand in its strength alone. Forth to the mighty conflict in this our glorious day. From victory unto victory. A crown of life shall be Till every foe is conquered And strength to strength uphold Remember the animals. Stop the cruelty to animals. All present blessings continue. Pure thoughts during the day. No negative second level trivial ugly. Every 15 minutes, rejoice about something. We rejoice for this temperature. Let's go see what it is, the temperature. My goodness, isn't that wonderful? The museum in January is doing okay, mid-January. We didn't get the leak on the port side midship.
So we'll try for that again when our good weather comes. But things are getting done. And it is being kept whole from the elements. And do you think they'll ever have a Disneyland in Tokyo? No. The seven dwarfs would tower over the natives. Thick shake, pineapple, bananas, cashews, oatmeal, scrumptious, minerals, vitamin, protein, health. Mary Ramage, the hat is a great big success. All the people at church liked it, and all the people at Walmart liked it, and all the people in the other stores liked it. Even when it was raining, and no wonder you couldn't find a box big enough for it. So we went to Yorktown, Westchester County, James Dunham, and Bonnie Becker Dunham, and Glendora, and we went to Mary's house and we picked up the new hat that Mary bought at Goodwill. See that? You heard the story that Paul radiates Goodwill? That's where his suit came from, his tie, and his pants. I'm here to cheer you up. I'm here to make you the great person that you want to be, and the great person that God wants you to be. Uh, the, uh, we'll start with a Bible lesson, but it's not as inspiring as what I'm looking for, but it's kind of nice. It's from Exodus chapter 23, verse 1, and it says, You shall not circulate a false report. That applies to you, United States attorneys. That applies to you, assistant attorney generals of the state of New York. Do not circulate false reports. Do not put your hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. That's right. And if you've done that, folks, go right now and admit that you were wrong, say that you were sorry, reform, you'll never do it again, and then go atone for it. Okay? And we'll have a clean conscience. One thing that we can do to cheer you up is to tell you some jokes. And uh, if you're giving a speech, remember that the mind cannot absorb more than the seat can endure. And the salesman says, I've been on the road for three months. And somebody who didn't know he was a salesman says, gee, he must be a slow driver. And why did the inventor cross a TV set with a microwave oven? So he could watch 60 minutes in a quarter of an hour. And they have uh, scales that you step on. And a voice says how much you weigh. And they have cars that talk. Why can't they make a washing machine that talks and tells you what it did with the other sock? IBM and Goodyear are going to merge so they can manufacture a computer that makes snap decisions. And why did they invent the upside down lighthouse? It's for submarines. Uh, will they ever have a Disneyland in Tokyo? No, because the seven dwarfs will tower over the natives. Why did the man quit his job at Midas Muffler? He found it exhausting. Marilyn says to Betty, what does your son do? And Betty says, oh, he's the plant manager for a great big industrial complex. Whoopee! Yep, it's his job to water them every day. And did you hear about the man who had a very interesting and very different job? It was his job to put the one cashew in a can of mixed nuts. And Paul started an interesting company, a manufacturer. He manufactures knee pads for people who wear contact lenses. What do you call a veterinarian who specializes in elephant skin disease. 
a pachydermatologist. This is Glendora, cheerful look at life. Two minutes of goodwill and good cheer and good humor. Let's look in the happy book and see if we can find something to make you happy. The happy book has all different colored pages. Isn't that fun? And you go from one book to the other and the pages are a different color. What I'm saying is on page 28 today I noticed that uh, in this book Let's say take page 25. In this book, step nine is pink. And in the deluxe edition, I think it's different, folks. Yep, it's blue. Let's see what it says. Also, it helps after each job to plan ahead what you'll do the next 30 minutes. Now, here's an example. I'm going to wash the inside of that window. And as I do it, I'm going to count 15 blessings. Have 30 pure thoughts and be cheerful. Or you might use the next... 30 minutes trying to get somebody else to wash the inside of that window and that'll really make you cheerful. If it's a big job that takes an hour or a day or a week, compart it into smaller jobs that take a half hour or so. And writing down all these things in a book for you was a big job, says Glendora, to you, but it got done in half hour daily segments and everywhere, anytime, no matter where you go. A half hour a day for a week while in Las Vegas, some more in Chicago, some more in Buffalo, and so on. Waiting at the gate at airports, riding the subways, etc. That's right. That's how it got done. I just had to get these things done for you. I had to get them down for you to help you because I want more than anything else for you to be happy. Here's some more purple. Well, did you know that you are a great person? And do you know uh, that you are looking in the wrong place for your happiness? Do you know that it isn't in the grocery stores and it isn't in the sto other stores and it isn't in movies and it isn't in watching TV? That's not where you're going to find it. Guess where you're going to find it? Guess where you're going to find it? That's right. When you are all alone, you're alone time with God, and do that the first thing every morning. And what do you do during that time? Well, you, you got to have something to get you started, a devotional of some kind, like the daily bread. Here it is underneath a Sony book. This is a good one. But go to the church and they'll help you get one. Um, and you write down what your special talents are. Your talents are different from everybody else's. Your face is different. Your voice is different. Your thinking is different. You're different from everybody else. You're very, very special. That's because you were created to do a special job. And when you do that special job, then you're happy. Because then you're going to get everything you want. When you count your blessings, 
born, alive, healthy, food, clothing, and a home, freedom, independence, no catastrophes. What are catastrophes? A flood, fire in your house, a car accident, Lyme disease, cancer, heart disease. Your finances, you can rejoice about that. Your education, you can read and write. And your career, and your spouse, and your families, the family you came from and the family that you made. And as you go through the day, you count pure thoughts. Singing hymns helps a lot. An example of a pure thought is, Pray and praise God without ceasing, Glory in His perfect love. Say that once, twice, three times, say it a hundred times. And keep away from thinking about anything bad or ugly or second level or trivial. When you come out of your alone time with God and you're all clean and sparkling inside and then the inside comes to the outside and then everything starts coming your way and don't you for a minute let anything make you unhappy. Now let's pray for the people at DCTV, Public Access Television. In the capital of the United States, the District of Columbia. Let's pray for them. Let's pray that they will do the things that are right, that they will stop doing things that are wrong. The best prayer you can say for anybody is what? Make yourself one with God. Well, of course you are one with God, but you've got to realize it. And you've got to remember it. And you've got to talk about it. And you've got to think about it. And it has to be foremost in your thought. And you don't want any negative thoughts or second level thoughts or trivial thoughts or ugly thoughts. So we pray that for you people down there in DC TV. You've got a great calling. You've been honored. You've been chosen. You're there to do a wonderful and great thing. Don't let anything block you from doing it the best it can be done. And you can't resist our prayers, can they folks? No. Prayers are too powerful. Prayers are electromagnetic waves, light waves, like laser. And they have a pile of force. So we just send them these pulses of electromagnetic waves that they will find their goodness and their oneness and their greatness. Have you seen this? It's a video camera and it costs $27. And I don't know why it's always at CVS. That's the only place I've ever seen it. And you go out and you do your 20 minutes of video and then you bring it back to CVS and then they develop it onto a CVD. And then you play it on your computer. Now what do you think of that? A disposable video camera. And as I was buying it in CVS on Saturday afternoon, a man said, you have Glendora. He says, you know, 40 years ago, he says, there used to be a TV show called Glendora. And he talked on and on about it, and I listened. And I told him, I'm the Glendora. It wasn't 40 years ago, Roger Kern. It was 50 years ago. You can count the rings under my eyes. I was wondering if I should tell you about the legal paper I'm working on, or shall I read it to you? I guess it's best to wait until it's done.
it's in progress and it's it's good it is good it, it's really good do you like the new telephone answering service I do it's Verizon and it's good it's very nice the way it retrieves your messages okay you got anything to say call me up and call for a free Rondora Happy Book I don't know how many there are left but for the time being we can supply you so keep the courage flaming folks where for you we know how great you can be and we can help you find it and rejoice about something every 15 minutes and count your pure thoughts and pray for your enemies and spend your alone time with God what's up folks that's the moon orange moon Oh, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that marvelous? Is it showing up orange? I see it orange very, very well. And it's just what it looks like, a big orange. I would say the temperature is about 12 degrees. The January moon, 2006. four hands. One person to move the string and one person to videotape.com. Check your oneness with God. Pray that you people at public access in Prince George's County in Maryland be one with God and know your strength, your power, your fulfillment, your happiness, your peace, the prestige that you're looking for. Check your oneness with God every 15 minutes. Want a popsicle, folks? I suppose we could flavor it. Yeah, we could put Kool-Aid up there in the eave, in the gutter. What flavor do you want? Lime? <laughs> this is Waldo dog. Waldo is here doing his laundry. You, this is Waldo. <laughs> his cute little jacket and his belt in the back. <laughs> Hi, Waldo dog. <laughs> He's adorable. How old is he? He is three years old. He will be four really? in March. And what is he? Uh, he little? is a Shih Tzu oh. by three. And what? he's a hearing ear dog. He's a what? Hearing ear dog. Oh, yes. What's that mean? Hearing I'm ear dog. I'm part of hearing and I live breed. I wear <laughs> hearing aids, but he helps me with the phone, the door, the alarm. He does, really? And traffic. Mm -hmm. What is it? He's a hearing aid dog. Yes. 
Well, that's marvelous, Waldo. Thank you. <laughs> you think we're silly, don't you? <laughs> He's so cute sitting there. Yes, I know. I love him. <laughs> Hi, Waldo dog. <laughs> this is a toothbrush for Big Mouth. How are you? Here is to whom. This is a toothbrush for Big Mouth. How are you? Here is to whom. This legal paper is going. George McDermott. Oh, these are so heavy. Think what they're going to cost at the post office with this new rate that the post office has and then the post office goes up on the rate and then they don't have any stamp to match it. Sadly Stevens Burke and Burke is a defendant in this action. Joanne Freer, a judge of the White Plains City Court, graduate of Pace University Law School. Mayor Delfino, and the Common Council, White Plains, New York, friend who went to school with Joanne Freer, Sonny Katz, the marshal for the city of New York, uh, city of White Plains, Christine Savarino is learning a hard lesson, Charles F. Dolan, another one who's learning a hard lesson. Cecilia Master really a defendant in this action. Uh, James L. Dolan and Cable Region Systems Corporation continuing their persecution of public access. Brian Hansberry, a judge in the city court, city of White Plains. Albert Lebrun, a person who has stood up for 15 years against corruption in the courts. Uh, rings, uh, scams, 
between judges, lawyers, and clerks. Edward Whitney, who wrote the book, The Controllers, the people who are taking everything they can out of you, and Arnie Engen, a person who is showing you that we are being snickered, puckered, swindled. And this is going to be my new signer in Pitts Peak Scale, a woman who does great work for the uh, kitty cats, rescuing them. Uh, she gets them in a in a kitty trap, and then she uh, gets them feed, fed, and then she takes them to the veterinarian, and she gets them all medically 100%, uh, and then has them spayed and then finds homes for them. And that's exactly what happened to you, little dot com over there. So now, what is this paper? Well, this paper, this is the 15th hour on this paper, folks. And uh, the situation is, one door won a judgment against Cecilia Masterelli in the city court, city of White Plains, County of Westchester, state of New York, United States of America. And uh, this Park Avenue Law Forum, Sadly Stevens, Burke and Burke, who are wonderful workers for the devil, and a lawyer there named Walter A. Sawrock, uh, made a motion to the court uh, to vacate that judgment. Well, they lost. And then they made a second motion uh, to vacate the judgment, and they lost that too. And they didn't have any meritorious defense, and uh, they threw out lies and cheats. And this cost Glendora a whole lot of money, and a whole lot of ergs of energy, and dollars, and hours. And uh, I turned around and sued the law firm, Saddling Stevens, Burke & Burke, at 230 Park Avenue, the Pan Am building in New York City, Manhattan. And I sued Walter A. Slarock, the lawyer there. And I sued Cecilia, the defendant, for causing me all that unnecessary work. And so Slarock made a motion to dismiss, and I discussed that with you last week. And I wrote a cross motion to deny that motion to dismiss and to grant Glendora the $5,000 damages against Sadly, Sarat, and Cecilia. Now, this is the second $5,000, folks. The first one is one. It's been given to the county clerk. Uh, it's been filed. The county clerk has given it to the sheriff of Westchester County, the sheriff of Westchester County. Uh, will be receiving tomorrow my $35 and the ju uh, execution to go to Cecilia's place of employment, which is Cablevision Systems Corporation at 1053 Park Street uh, in Peekskill, and to go there and take uh, the money out of her salary. We have asked her many, many times to pay it voluntarily. Now, I don't think that she'll have to do that, do you? I should think at that point, Cable Vision would have enough sense to step forward and pay the judgment. I mean, they look pretty foolish. A billion dollar company with garnishing the wages of an employee. So here uh, is, uh, well, Sawrock wrote a so-called reply to Glendora's cross motion, and uh, now I am writing a sir reply to his uh, reply to my cross motion. And it's called Glendora's sir reply, and these are the points, folks. Sadly did not appear and is in default. Cecilia did not reply to Glendora's cross motion to deny, dismiss, and grant $5,000. Sawrack failed to present to the court either a reply or an affidavit. A fortiari 
Splendor must be granted $5,000 damages for hours, dollars, and herbs unnecessarily caused by the defendants, ignorant and shoddy papers, and White Plains City Court must grant itself $5,000 sanctions for defendants unnecessarily overworking the city court. So that was a nice thing to do, to look out for the city court. They abused the process. Who? Sadly, Sarak and Cecilia. Now this is the second lawsuit, the second $5,000. Uh, here is a cover letter from Sarak to the clerk of the court, Mr. Paul Friedman. And this was by overnight express mail, and I picked it up Saturday. Saturday was quite a day. The temperature in, in January was 45 degrees, and it was fine. And I went into Staples to buy some 9 by 12 envelopes, and I came out, and here was the fiercest rain and the fiercest wind, and the temperature dropping steadily. And it was dark, and it was a dangerous ride home. Uh, but, thankfully, that was okay. And then overnight, the temperature kept dropping, and dropping and dropping, and in the morning here was five inches of snow. and it was about 10 degrees. That was quite quite a night. Okay, this uh, uh, cover letter was received by Glendora on Jan January the 14th, 2006, the day I just described to you. And it was my uh, first year, 11 months of partnership with God, and that's where I'm trying to lead you. And it was memorable endorsed by Glendora on January 15th, 2006 and it's by overnight mail, and that only cost $14.40. Did you ever think postage would go up to $14.40? Uh, and it says, we represent defendants in the above matter. Well, Glendora wants to know who are we? Who are we? Saw Rock is a defendant. He cannot represent co-defendants. This is another ignorance on his part. Prima facie, if you're a defendant, you cannot represent a co-defendant. He cannot represent Cecilia, she's a co-defendant, and he cannot represent, sadly, Stevens, Burke, and Burke. They are a co-defendant. Cecilia is not appearing in this so-called reply affidavit. In other words, Cecilia is not opposing Glendora's cross motion to grant Glendora uh, the $5,000. Now, Sadly is not appearing in this uh, reply affidavit to Glendora's cross motion because Sarak cannot represent the co-defendant. Sarak is appearing pro se. Sarak, the lawyer, is appearing pro se, representing only himself. Indeed, Sadly did not appear January the 4th, 2006 at 4.30 p.m. in White Plains City Court and is in default. Herein, Glendora moves for default judgment against Sadly Stevens, Burke, and Burke. They did not appear, they did not defend, and Glendora fully expounded this in her cross motion. So there's no ambush here. It was in the cross motion. Uh, here is their um, blue back, only theirs happens to be yellow. And there's a comment about that. They are not attorneys for the defendants. Sadly is a defendant and cannot represent co-defendant Sadly. Can only represent itself or hire somebody to represent Sadly. Sarak cannot represent co-defendant Sadly nor co-defendant Cecilia. I keep saying this over and over and over again because they lie and they cheat. Now, Glendora refused Sarak reply affidavit. The caption here is wrong. It 
And Walter A. Saurock, being duly sworn, deposes and says, you want to know something? Let me show you his affidavit. I'll show you the signature. What do you think of this, folks? There's his signature. Certainly a muddled mind. But look at that. It is not notarized. So if you want to know uh, what's really happening here, and you want to know it quickly, even though it's a very well-written paper, uh, Sawrock did not reply, and it is not an affidavit. It is not an affidavit because he didn't swear to uh, before a notary public, and it's not a reply because he never replies to this thing I just discussed with you at length, that he's a defendant and he cannot represent co-defendants. He never replied to that. So it's not a reply and it's not an affidavit. Glendora says this is a frivolous paper of Sawrock. Emotions 1 and 2. It was got him into this uh, a problem that he has right now. And so far Sawrock has not made any uh, one more, one move that is on the merits. He can't deal with the merits because he doesn't have a meritorious defense. The merits are is that he was ignorant with the papers that he submitted to the court. He caused the court a whole lot of, in, of uh, work, unnecessary work and labor, scant judicial resources, and uh, he caused me unnecessary time, dollars, and herbs, herbs of energy. Okay. So this was on, we're up to page 21 here. Sawrock is never able to defend on the merits. He is eternally devoid of a meritorious defense. Note nowhere does he address the gravamen. His shoddy, ignorant lawyering cost Glendora $5,000 worth of hours, dollars, and herbs, and he never deals with the issue. It is all penumbra and no core. Note further that Sarak never even mentions Glendora's ad dominum. I handed in an ad dominum that was 40 pages. I showed that to you. Ad dominum is a listing of your damages, uh, the hours and the dollars, and what was done in those hours. And it, it is totally unchallenged on this alone that Glendora wins. He extenuates uh, the court's labor, time, and effort, another seven days, for all of this alphosis of two and a quarter pages. And it is not an affidavit, and it is not a reply. It is not sworn to. He pads it with 150 pages of repeat, of record. It's already in the record. And he adds 150 pages again. You see, that's what you call bulk and no weight. That's what you call so-called billable time, billable papers. But not honest, billable work. And it took 15 minutes to pull it all apart. They must have a huge stapling machine down there at Sadly Stevens, Burke and Burke. And Glendor wants to know who is paying this. Uh, Cablevision is not a defendant. Sadly Stevens, Burke and Burke is Cablevision's liar for hire, but may not be anymore because they let this default judgment happen. The other lawsuit, the first lawsuit, and they lost all the way through on that. So they may not be cable visions. Liar for high and Robert Callaghy, who has lied for years, may be out of this.
Well, that is up to page uh, 25. And Gondor incorporates herein all that she wrote in her cross of New Year's Eve as if fully stated herein. Sarok, in his reply, does not deny his 30 lies. I pointed out 30 lies that he had written. Indeed, this that Sarok submits is not a reply. He leaves it unreplied. It is not a reply and it is not an affidavit. Again, this important point to be made in Neon Lights. Sawrock is the only defendant out of the three who replied to Glendora's cross motion of New Year's Eve. Yet Sawrock really did not reply to the cross, nor did he present the court with an affidavit. Okay, uh, would you like to hear the conclusion? Yeah. <laughs> That's probably the best thing is to hear the conclusion. Wherefore, therefore, in Ergo, Glendora has shown again that she was unnecessarily and irresponsibly damaged $5,000 by the ignorant and shoddy submissions to this court by Sally Stevens Burke and Burke, by Walter A. Sara, and by Cecilia Masterilli. She has shown, Glendora has shown, that Sadly is in total default, that Cecilia did not reply to Glendora's cross motion to deny dismissal and award uh, $5,000, that Sawrock neither replied nor swore to. Lastly, Glendora has shown that the White Plains City Court should be reimbursed through sanctions for defendants, three, overworking this court, with ignorant and shoddy papers. I thought it was kind of nice to stand up for the court and give the court a motion has to be made. I don't think the court can do it sui sponte, but maybe they could. I thought it was kind of nice to stand up for the White Plains City Court, whom these three defendants overworked. And this is dated January 17, uh, 2006. It was sent by overnight mail, and that cost $28.80. Uh, one to the court and one to Sara in White Plains. Guaranteed delivery today at noon. Uh, yours in truth, in Amor Patriae and in Amor New Yorkai, Glendora, and this opus 1341, and it says here that it took 13 hours, but no, folks, this is the 15th hour. And this is the last step, reporting it to you. And it cost $84.62 to print and post. And the estimated internet number is 4,244 edition 2. I wanted you to see my new stamp. It's a lovely new stamp, but it's so big that I can't find a stamp pad that will fit it. The addition is uh, lead people to be perfect and stop cruelty to animals and stop injustice in the courts and sue judges when they break the law. That is the platform. Now here's a very nice thing. Of course, under penalty of perjury, Glendora asseverates that she has told the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, the help of God, that Sarok, Sadly, and Cecilia have not and then that is signed Glendora, and then this is signed Glendora. Glendora prays for Sadly, Sawrock, and Cecilia that they soon find their oneness with God, and with that, all the happiness, peace, wealth, health, acceptance, applause, fame, popularity, attainment, achievement they wish that they look in the right places for it and cease looking in the wrong places. Solemnly ratified Glendora. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? So when evil comes your way, it's good because you get a chance to pray for the people involved in the evil. It's nice, isn't it? And this is the uh, mailing matrix. And I showed you that already. 
and I included here the transfer of judgment for $5,000. This is the first lawsuit, Glendor against Cecilia Masterelli. This transfer of judgment cost $6. New York State gets in on every step of this. It cost $35 to have the sheriff uh, serve this execution. This is signed by Pat Lupe. Now I'm going to show you the execution. Execution means that the sheriff goes up and collects the money. The sheriff gives Cecilia 20 days to pay it voluntarily, and then they go back and you <laughs> send them another $35. This is an execution, folks, if you've never seen them. I've never seen them. That was the night that Cecilia defaulted. And they will take it out of her wages. As long as you make apparently eight, more than $85 a week. See that right there? I guess if you don't make any more than eighty-five dollars a week, they can't garnish you. And the back of this is notice to judgment debtor. That would be Cecilia receiving income execution. We say the same prayer for Cecilia, and we say the same prayer for Savage Stephen Birkenberg. And to the people who are behind this, Charles F. Dolan and James L. Dolan. And all the people they pay to lie and cheat and deprive the public of this access to TV. We pray that they will look for their happiness in the right places. They're looking in all the wrong places now. They'll never find happiness where they're looking. See if we can't direct them in the right place. Direct them into the right places. Tomorrow, you and I, folks, are going to Danbury, Connecticut, the Comcast cable TV system there. And we're going to find some local uh, signers. See, we have our purple clipboard. And uh, get to chat with Gondora on Danbury uh, Public Access TV. And also to get uh, the uh, public access show of Arnie Engen and Ed Whitney and uh, Ed Whitney and uh, Albert LeBron and get that on TV in Danbury, Connecticut. And since we go to Waterbury and we try to find some well we go to lunch first, and then we try to find some signers in Waterbury. And then I wanted to go down and get it settled at Nutmeg uh, public access, which is Bristol and Plainville, is it Plainville or Plainview? Uh, Connecticut, all those towns around there. It's uh, imperative that the story of the policing of Albert Lebrun by the Connecticut ring of judges and lawyers and crooked people uh, to take away people's homes and get liens against them 
uh, is running rampant in Connecticut and has for many years, and Albert would run to a stand against it. And I think he's making tremendous progress exposing this. Uh, he's got it on the uh, cable vision system in Fairfield County, Greenwich, Stanford, Norwalk, Norwalk, and then uh, in the Bridgeport system, which is contiguous to that, Soundview, uh, public access. He's got it on in Bolton, up there with Amy Johnson. Hi, Amy. How you doing? Uh, and uh, Hebron, through Joe Salonia. And uh, they've got it on in Manchester clock system in Connecticut and also in uh, Southington and uh, Cheshire and Meriden. So we're out to try to get it all the way across the state of Connecticut. It's a story that must be told. People must know about this ring of judges and lawyers stealing people's homes. Uh, I've got an interesting thing to tell you. The Daily Bread, which is a little tiny devotional that I use every day, uh, it gives you a Bible passage and then it gives you a discussion and it stimulates you to think about the great things that you really are instead of the frivolous and the trivial. And I left it at the laundromat, hoping that somebody would read it and be helped. And it was so nice. There was a young boy, he couldn't have been more than 18, 17 or 18. And when I went by the first time, he was reading it. And then when I took the, put the clothes into the dryer, he was reading it. And then when I finished folding the clothes, he was still reading it. Do you suppose that he got it? Do you suppose he found the secret? Do you suppose he now knows where to find it? Isn't that marvelous? Wasn't little Waldo dog cute? in his little jacket. There was something else to tell you. Let's see. How do you like the new uh, telephone answering machine, the Verizon? I think it's pretty good. Oh yes, Roger Kern. Uh, I was in CVS and I was buying this uh, video camera. This is a video camera you buy for $26. And it'll take a 20 minute video and then you take it back to CVS and they develop it on a CD desk and that's it, that's the end of the camera. Uh, well, we're in that business so it behooved us, didn't it, to own one of these, whatever we're going to do with it, but we should know about it. Roger Kern said he was a fellow customer in line, and he said, Glendora, I see you've got that on your lapel. He said, 40 years ago there was a program on WRGB called Glendora. And I told him that I was the one. And it wasn't 40 years ago, it was 50 years ago. <laughs> Okie doke. And did you know that the inventor crossed a TV set with a microwave oven? And do you know why? so he could watch 60 minutes in a quarter of an hour. And why did uh, the inventor invent the upside down lighthouse? It's for submarines. And will they ever have a Disneyland in Tokyo? No. The seven dwarfs will tower over the natives. IBM and Goodyear 
are going to merge so they can manufacture a computer that makes snap decisions. And Peter says that he's the image of goodwill, and he is. That's where his jacket came from, his tie, and his shirt. Mine come from Salvation Army. Uh, I ordered uh, from J.C. Penney. I ordered a pair of purple slacks, so I thought I'd order a pair from Mary Ramage too. And I did. And if you ordered uh, before February 7th out of the new catalog, and you ordered more than $25, you got the $7.80 shipping free. That's a lot of money, $7.80 shipping, folks. Things didn't used to be like that. I told you a nice little girl, we used to send a letter for three cents. And I, I saved the stamps, they were purple, and had Abraham Lincoln on it. A salesman said that he'd been on the road for three months, and somebody who didn't hear him that he was a salesman said, gee, he must be a slow driver. Uh, they make uh, cars that talk, and they make scales that talk. Why don't they make a washing machine that talks and tell you what it did with a other sock? Why did the man qu uh, quit his job at Midas Muffler? He was exhausting. And Marilyn says, my son is a plant manager in a big industrial complex. And her friend says, really? Yeah, it's his job to water them every day. Now here's an interesting job. Harry's job is to put the one cashew in a can of mixed nuts. And Edgar started a new business. He manufactures knee pads for people who wear contact lenses. And what do you call a veterinarian who specializes in elephant skin disease? Give up? A veterinarian who specializes in elephant skin disease. A pachydermatologist. I think we covered everything up to date, folks. The chat with Glendor is on 51 TV stations, 510 municipalities, and we have problems all over the place. James Correa in Seymour, they make him uh, send a proof of residency. I think that's kind of mean, because they're saying that they don't believe him, that he lied on the application, put down the wrong residency. I don't think that's nice, but I'll call up James and see if he'll tolerate them. Uh, pray for the people in public access in uh, DC TV, public access in the District of Columbia. Pray for all those people. This is the greatest prayer you can say. Pray for them that they'll be one with God. That's the greatest prayer you can say. And they can be. And you can be. And you just have to spend your alone time with God the first thing in the morning and realize how careful you were made and how you were made differently from everybody else to do a job that only you can do in this beautiful universe. And then to count your pure thoughts all day long and don't have any negative second level or trivial or ugly thoughts. You know, the mind is such a wonderful thing. I was trying to recall the words uh, I have a collection of words, uh, 200 and the 43, well it doesn't matter, words, and I was trying to recall the ones from 111 to 150, and at first nothing would come. But gradually, one word at a time, kept coming back. Now that's a wonderful thing, a mind. It's a wonderful thing, a mind. How can a mind have a memory like that? How can a mind have a memory like that? That's what the wife said to her husband. Or no, he said to her, a mind is a wonderful thing. And she said, yes, everybody should have one. But God is such a great creator. And then every 15 minutes you rejoice. We. We're rejoicing at 5.55, which is a magic minute, 5.55. The biggest magic minute in the whole day is 11.11 a.m. or 11.11 p.m. Uh, but we were rejoicing about the young man who was reading the Daily Bread, and maybe he made the connection. 
And then at 6 o'clock, uh, what were we rejoicing about? Okay, what we're doing right now, that the mind is a wonderful thing. So folks, you know the game, button, button, who's got the button? You played that as a kid. You hit the button, and then... tell that. I think we did tell that to Don Hewitt. One time I had Don Hewitt on the phone and I told him that. Folks, here's some more good cheer for you. Laughter from Harrison, Westchester County, New York. Why did the inventor cross the TV set with a microwave oven? Oh, I don't know. So he could watch 60 minutes in a quarter of an hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rob. Here's the first circuit again, folks, in Boston. And here's a judicial misconduct complaint. Uh, Magistrate Judge Allman and United States District Judge Lisi. They violated the United States Code. It says clearly that uh, Title 28 Section 636 says that no magistrate can touch a case without the uh, permission, without, in writing, the consent in writing of the litigants. Well, why not? Because Article 3 of the Constitution says that uh, you're entitled to a United States District Judge and you can't be tossed off to a teacher's helper, a magistrate, without your permission. But the United States District Court in Rhode Island doesn't know that, nor does the United States District Court in Bangor, Maine know that, and in several other places. Well, these people have violated the United States Code, and this is judicial misconduct and disability. So I think we got the first circuit, because this is violation of black letter law. Now it'll be interesting to see how Bodine tries to get himself around that. Isn't it awful the way people mangle their signatures? It shows you what's going on in their brains. How do you make the judge laugh on Monday? You tell him a joke on Friday. This book tells you folks how all of our money policy has been robbed from us and been given to the Federal Reserve System. And the Federal Reserve System is in the control of the international bankers. Our monetary policy has been taken out of our hands and given to the Federal Reserve System, and the Federal Reserve System is entirely under the control of the international bankers. It's 33 degrees, and we put the 1993 Lincoln into drive, and we take off for Connecticut. Why? We want to see if we can get a local signer for a chat with Glendora in Danbury. 
the Comcast system. And then we want to see if we can get a local signer for Glendora in Waterbury. And then we want to go to Plainville, Connecticut, the Nutmeg Public Access, and get a local signer for a chat with Glendora. Why? We have a message to get to you people. We have the secret. That's your happiness. And we want to tell you what it is. Interesting weather yesterday. Rain all day. And it took away all of the snow, except where it's plowed high or shoveled high. And we also want to find a local resident to sign in those three places for Arnie Engin's program, Quo Vadis, Albert Lebrun, and Edward A. Whitney. A joke. Did you know that computers are in the Bible? Eve said to Adam, Do you want an apple soup? <clears throat> we have the secret, and we want you to have it. And right now, we say a prayer for you. Breathe on you, breath of God. Fill you with life anew that you may love as thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Look at that, folks. Mist rising from the falls. That's Quaropus. That's how White Plains got its name. The plains, early in the morning, and the Indians would see the mist rising from the plains. And so, it was called White Plains. Folks, you just gotta see this scenery. Wow, this beautiful river going south, these beautiful mountains. Where are we? We're in Connecticut, and we're on Route 7, going south between Great Barrington and Danbury. You just have to see this fantastic scenery. I remember this route from the time that we went to Norwalk, to Cablevision, to get a signer. And Anne Marie Hearn said, I'll take time to help somebody out. And she's still helping me out. And she's keeping the program on TV. In Fairfield County, Greenwich, Stanford, Norwalk. Cable vision, and they will not return my tapes. And see the cross of Christ shining brightly in the dingle. Wherever you go, you will find people worshiping God. Kent, Connecticut. You remember we videotaped this before? The Congregational Church? 
This is much more elaborate than most congregational churches in New England. We are two and a half hours from home. 70 miles, but one with God. Dan Barry is 25 miles away. There's another congregational church, New England Congregational Church, uh, Kent, Connecticut. Charming, charming. Waterbury, Connecticut. Waterbury, Connecticut. We're at Telemedia. Sky, cable channel 13, public access. Spectacular. We have a great God. Isn't this a lovely bathroom? You see the laundry chute on the wall? This belongs to Albert Lebrun and his wife. Okay, thank you. Hartford, Connecticut, the capital of the state. This is uh, the new building there, that's the Hotel of the Convention Center. Uh, that's a brand new day. A new convention center and a new hotel. What are those copper buildings? Uh, I believe this is uh, something to do with uh, water, water. I think it's water from the look at the truck way up in the air. <laughs> the Navy says there's more. <clears throat> planes at the bottom of the sea than there are submarines in the sky. They call this building on stitch. Stilts, uh huh? It's still, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It certainly is. What is that building? Channel 61 is over there. What's Channel 61? New Britain? Uh, no, but Channel 61 is high grade. And, uh, Public and, access? Uh, yeah, it's an independent channel. Uh, All right, Albert. Folks, uh, Albert Lebrun. This is the second time he's taken me to Home Buffet. I love it. Yesterday I showed you the buffets. Today is a huge dining room. And Albert gets mad at me because I say thank you. Here's where we conduct our business here in Bolton, Connecticut. Thank you very much, Patricia Van Ness. Thank you, Helen Chattel in the office uh, there, and uh, Amy Johnson in the control room, and others who are up here. It's very nice that you allow us to come up here and do our program. We can't tell you how much we appreciate it, and it's such a wonderful thing to, to be able to come up here and do it. You are so helpful and kind to all the stuff here that we have, and, and you're, doing, you're doing such a nice job, and we appreciate coming up here to do our taping for the programs that we call Coldwater's America. We thank you very much. Goodbye, nice bed, and two good nights sleep. So there's one dog house, right? Where one dog was, right? Okay, tell me. Right there where the little house is. And uh, the bicycle was 300 feet down the road.
this chain was across there, the dog was able to come up with the chain, his mouth to the chain. There was blood here on the sidewalk. There's a sidewalk there. The tree was small, small then. The tree was that high. There was blood there. <coughs> there was blood in the door of the building. tree leaf right here. Now the bicycle were 300 feet. Feet down the road. This is where you see that little sign there. Mm -hmm. That's where the bicycle were, 300 feet. Well, during the trial, when they attached my home, they say that's where the incident happened. During the trial, they move, they move everything in here. When they attached my home, one of the girls says it's happened down there. The girl who got bit says it's happened down there. Her sister says it's happened down there on Monson Road. And the judge allowed $100,000 $100, attachment when they were 350 feet apart. So I guess the judge just wants money. Yeah, yeah, the judge, uh, you see all those papers. And what's the name of this judge? Judge Charles Blum. Spell it, please. S-C-H-E-I-N-B-L-U-M. And what court? In uh, Rock, Rockville. And that's what kind of a court? It's a civil, civil court. But a district court, or? It's a civil, uh, it's not a, it's a, they call it district of Tallinn, but it's not a federal court, it's a state court. County of Tallinn? A county, county of Tallinn is right. So the day of the other dog house was a The other dog house was where? Sitting right there before. Sitting there. You see? I quit. And they were able to run. I had a post over here with a line from here to way back there on the tree. And they were able to run from here to way back there on the tree. Just a minute. Say it again, please. I had a post over here with a line from here to way back there, 200 feet back there, on a tree. And the dog was able to run from here to the tree down there. Got it. During the trial, Parker says that my dog was tied up with, on the post over here. And who is Parker? Parker is the lawyer for those little girls, for those uh, stay safe. Who, What's uh, his first name? Stay uh, the lawyer? Yes. Well, uh, Brian Parker. Brian Parker. And what's the name of the girls? Stacy, which was 14 years old, and her sister, Andrea, both Flotos. And Fluto is spelled how? F-L-O-T-O. -O. That's Floto, okay. Yeah. And on this tree... He had a line going from that tree way back there, way back. Matter of fact, the line is still here. And this is the line for the dog? A piece of the line is still here. You see, it's all cut from the tree up there. And this is for the dog? That's what's for the dog. Okay. The dog, the dog could come out, smell it, right into this. I, I, People, 
what she was doing, she was driving a wheel bike, a front wheel into the chain to tease the dog. And more than likely, she got bit. She got bit when she, on her bike right here, when she was teasing the dog with a front wheel. How do you know that? You weren't... I don't know that, but this, the way, the way it's looked like because of the blood, right? And then the dog was taken loose. Floto, the father of the girl, turned my dog loose. Stretched the chain up to here. And the collar was over here with a little circle on the chain and the collar sat right on top, right? He forgot to stretch the chain up to here. If a dog turned himself loose, the chain should have been stretched. Okay. All right, what you're saying is, is that they set you up to have the dog look like the dog bit her away from your property. In the old 300 feet down there. Down there, and that uh, the dog did not bite her here where the blood was. No, the dog, the dog bit her. I mean the dog. The chain tied up and yeah, everything. I misspoke. And to make me responsible, they make believe it's happened on the road. Yes, yes, because they were responsible because they were trespassing. Right, right, exactly. They were told, they were told before not to come here. They were told at the end of May not to come here. My wife catch them behind those shrub there, the shrub we only that high then. And they were told not to come here on this property. And there's a sign over here. You want to picture that sign over here? Now just let me make this clear to people. Yeah, let me see the sign. Somebody, somebody tried to, to wipe no it out. No trespassing. After. Right. Violators will be prosecuted. Okay, now, I just want to say again that this was a scheme to uh, make Albert Lebrun responsible for the dog bite. The girls were responsible for being bitten by the dog by coming onto the property when they shouldn't have. The dogs were protecting the property. And so, down, way down the road, uh, 300 feet uh, were the bicycles and tell the people the bicycles and the bicycles yeah and uh, you say that Mr. Floto the father of the girls was a setup what was the setup he took he took the bike from my, my yard here he took the bikes from your yard drove them 300 feet down the road there throw them on each side of the road there uh-huh right? untie my dog tell my dog go right to make believe like this happened down there that it we happened have, down there we have seven different locations false location of this incident we One have seven thing. different locations of what false false location of this false. incident false 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 location of F-A-L-S-E F-A-L-S-E okay of this incident right the testimony of the girl the testimony of Larry Floteau the father of the girl they change they change direction all the time the police report the police report say 300 feet down the road from Monson Road Larry Floteau says over here someplace Stay safe, Lotto, during trial, says over there. Andrea Flotto says on Monson Road down there. So it's all, it's all, that it's doesn't a, stand yeah, up. It, it's all a fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. bottom of the door yeah yeah okay so the girl who was bitten was which one Stacy Stacy uh-huh so to, that was her travel after she got bitten she tried to get in the building you're supposed to get some help oh right? yeah and then then 
Then she went on this way here. She went on this way because there was blood on the on the leaf. There was leaf. The leaf yeah. There was blood on the leaf in here. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But she make believe she went home this way because of the blood that we found there. She make believe how a girl will go back home the territory of the dog. <laughs> right? Right. Well the, well, the dog wasn't stationary. The dog had moved somewhere else by then. Yeah. No, 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 no. When she went home, the dog was still stationary. Right, right after the incident, she went home, the dog was still tied out there. It's after that that her father... Okay. All right. All right. So, yes, right. Now, her eyeglass, her eyeglass was found. Her eyeglass. Place underground, and why my wife is the one who found it. Why they could not? They came on this property. The dog warden came on this property. He came on this property. Why they did not find it? Because when he was coming back on his property with the young daughter Andrea, he was parking his car right over, right over the highlands. Where do the Flotos live? Show me the direction they live. Right in the back here. About okay. 600 feet back here. There's too much wood, you don't see it all, but 600 okay. feet back. All righty. The first house in the back of my shop. All right, wait just a second. Your mailbox used to be over there. Yeah, and they were, they were cutting across. They were coming with a bicycle and cutting across here. They were petting this dog over here. They were what? Pet. Petting. Petting this dog here. Petting the dog here. And how do you know that? Because uh, when they were catch beyond those shrub over here, and my wife told them, over there they were catch close to the other dog, my wife told them, don't come here no more, do you understand? And they took their bicycle over there, they pet the dog over here, and then they went home. They were petting this dog, they were throwing a rock at the other dog. When my wife catch them behind the shrub there, when they come out of there, they release a rock. They release a piece of stone. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. yeah. So they were petting this one, throwing a rock at that one. Uh -huh. Now, Albert, we have seen the territory, and you did a very good job of explaining it. I just want to go over again. What is your hypothesis? Is it that the children came onto the property, were teasing the dog, the dog bit them on the property, and then a big scam started uh, to make believe that the dog bit them down the road. Is that right? That's right. That's the reason why they never served me with, with legal document. They served me with fake document because there's a statute which says that if you start a lawsuit and you don't have a claim, it's frivolous, you could get triple damage. It's yes, you right can. Absolutely. 52-568. Connecticut General Statute? Yes, yes. So that's why, that, that's exactly why they serve me with those fake front de land. All right, I want to see that document right now, okay? Yes. Now, Mr. Lebrun, uh, how did you receive this document? This document was sure served to me by Sheriff Lacava, Joseph Lacava, Deputy Sheriff for Hartford Counties. Just a second. Can you take your finger away, yeah. please? Okay. All right. We've got that. And we've got his signature. All right. And uh, so it was served to you how? Did he come up to your door? Did he... he come up to my house. He come up to the door. To and, the door. and your house is in? Uh, South Windsor. In South Windsor. And he came to your home? Yes. With this document? Yes. And you answered the door? Yes. And tell me what happened. He called first to make sure we were home, and he hang up on uh, he, uh, We answered the phone, and he hang up, and then he came and delivered this. Right? Mm -hmm. And at the time I thought, at the time me, I was ignorant about the law, I thought it was a... Ignorant about the law? Yeah. I thought it was a lawsuit, a real lawsuit against me, but then it took me a long time. Six years later, I found out that I, found out that I was never sued. You were never sued? Because this document here... Yes. ...will not include in the package and without this someone here 
There was no lawsuit started against me, none whatsoever. Okay, I want to go over that again, please. What do they call this document? They call it a summon, but this summon and later sheriff to serve me with this air. With a summon, this command, this summon the sheriff to serve me with this air. Now, what is wrong with this document? By the Connecticut General Statute, you had to be served with a summons. This is not a, they call it a summon, but it's summon, it's command the sheriff to serve me with a summon. In the Connecticut General Statute, there's two summons involved to commence an action with a pre-judgment remedy. One summon the sheriff to serve, the other one serve, serve, serve the defendant to appear in court. The one that served, that commenced an action was not served on me, so they never commenced an action. Now to throw me off. Just a minute. What's the name of the one that they didn't serve on you, that didn't commence the action? What's that? It's a summon. It's a summon. A summons with notice? Okay. Uh, it's, it's a summon. Okay, a summons. Yeah. And you were never served with a summons? Yeah, I was not served Instead, with... Instead you were served with this? This one here, and to throw me off, they put a place for return date. That doesn't belong to this document. They put a docket number that doesn't belong there. All this here uh -huh. do not belong to this document. Okay. And then this over here, that's where that's where the that's the worst thing they could have done. Or right, explain that to us. Uh, Lisa D D Jesse of Box One when I'm at Connecticut is recognized Recognize? In, in the sum of 250 to prosecute. On a real summon to commence an action, this has to be there. But on this thing over here, that doesn't belong there. This is to throw me off. This is what I was explaining to you when I went to see a lawyer in, in uh, Stanford, and he put his finger around it, and they both left. All right. And now that's when I came here, and I study, and I find out that like this does not belong in there. If you go back to the statute... So that doesn't belong in the paper. In that doesn't belong in a summons. And what is that saying? Tell us what this is saying. The, this is a, re, a reconnaissance. If you don't have this... In what the, is it? A uh, what? A reconnaissance. Let me see the word, hon. Get your finger out, please. Recognized. Yeah. All right, let's read this. Let's read this to the people. You, you read it. Uh, Lisa De Jesse, of P.O. Box 1, Willimantic, Connecticut, is recognized in the sum of $250 to prosecute, etc. I don't even know what that means. That's meaning eh, over here, we got to supply a bond. If we don't have a person, the lawyer who signed this over here cannot be, cannot, cannot do this. He's got to get a another party to do it. I see, and you say what makes this paper defective is that this does not belong in a summons uh, doesn't to belong. commence an action. Th th this, this is fraud. This is pure fraud over here to make me believe. And the fraud was committed by Mr. Brian W. Prucker. Prucker. From no, the firm. No, Prucker. P-R-U-C-K-E-R. -E yes. Prucker. Yes, Commissioner. Commissioner of the Superior Court. And Mr. Prucker. And he's only a lawyer. Mr. Parker at the time was working with this firm here. Let me see it, please. And As that firm is? Asselin Associate. Uh, Asselina? Asselin Associate. Oh, Asselin and Associates, Attorneys at Law, uh, One Court House Square, Willimantic, Connecticut, 06226, and 203-423-16. Three eight, and his juris number is one zero one eight four seven. Okay. Now, Albert, I'm going to say this in my own words to see if I'm helping the public understand this. This uh, claim uh, belongs on a real summons, but it doesn't belong on this thing. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. On a summons that commences an action, this statement has to go on. On this document here, that doesn't belong there at all. So they did that to throw me off, to make me believe that they see the document that commands an action. Okay, it isn't clear to me what this document is. This is a document that someone the sheriff to serve What's me. it called? It's called a summon. 
It's called a summons. Yeah, and that's still the sheriff saw Albert Lebrun with the application for the prejudgment remedy, unsigned, proposed, writ. That's the thing they're going to attach your house with. Okay. A summon, a summon, that's the thing that commands an action. And this one doesn't, even though it's called no, a summons. No, that does not commence an action because that doesn't tell me to appear in court. Okay, okay, now we got it. Now, Albert, what have you got up here? Albert is offering 100000 for mm -hmm. anyone in this document who find a summon required by the Connecticut General Tattoo to commence an action with a prejudgment or many. Mm -hmm. Did anybody ever go after this $100,000? No, because they cannot find it. That's why I'm so generous here, because I know. <laughs> I know it's not there. So. <laughs> Albert, tell the folks what we've got here. This is the, the second page of the document that I was served with. Mm -hmm. It's an appearance of Aslan Associate by Parker. And he Parker. 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 Okay, Commissioner of the Superior Court. This Commissioner of the Superior Court means the only that he's a lawyer. Okay? Isn't it? Yes, yes, exactly. Uh -huh. Okay. And he claimed in the, in, for the plaintiff in this action, there were no action commands in here. He's saying that the second page of the document is the appearance of Crook Brian W. Prucker. An appearance, uh, tell us what it says, uh, please, but without the commencement of an action. Where did Prucker get his statutory authority? Oh, this is a good question. Two file an appearance without any action commenced in the state of Connecticut Superior Court for Tolland County. Tell us more. I see. The brain that victim LeBron had for 200 bucks an hour on October the 16th, 1990 as a lawyer by the name of Archer Norris, also filed an appearance on October 18, 1990. Where did Norris get his statutory authority to file an appearance oh, without good. the summon as required by the Connecticut General Statute yeah. 52-45A and 42-45B1 for the commencement of an action with a prejudgment remedy. All oh, those, that's good. That's very, very good. That's a question, folks, you always should ask somebody. What is your statutory authority? Is there anything else we should say about this page? No, that's this another. It's another phony page, right, Albert? Okay. So this second page is another phony document, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. And you've asked a very good question. Where did he get his statutory authority? He didn't, did he, Albert? He does not have no authority to file an appearance. There's no, no commencement, no action in court. Now, this third page, folks, is an application for a prejudgment remedy. And, Albert, tell me what a prejudgment hearing remedy is for that. A prejudgment remedy hearing is a hearing in court where the plaintiff is there, the defendant is there, the judge, they hear the testimony of both of them. In this case, Albert Lebrun was never heard. They don't put him on the, on, on the tribunal. Only the plaintiff was heard. And, and then the judge makes the decision a judge make the whether decision. to attach your property. Yes. And, and your claim about this, what's phony about this? That that didn't belong? In the, the uh, it was just a, a thing to scare you? No, this, this, uh, this is on the to extort you after they are attached you solid then without commencing an action then they'll do everything yeah. to, to okay. for you to pay out some kind of money because okay. they, got, they got an edge over you now I got uh, you this is extortion this is to scare you into it that it's legitimate right no it's not legitimate because they but the they're trying way, to... the only way they could do it they have to have liquidated this is not the liquid damage they don't know. This could be a case of $2,000, could be a case of a million. They, they attach me for 100000 over here. How do they know that it's... 
Albert, this is a phony document because they have to commence an action first. Yes. And they didn't commence an action. Uh, folks, I want to get it straight in my head uh, that uh, when they send out uh, this paper, if it were a real summons, they would have a hearing, a prejudgment hearing, and the judge would decide whether they're going to attach your property and for how much. Is that so? Yes. But on a case like this over here, they were not allowed to do no attachment at all. All right? Because... Uh, you got to commence an action first, one thing. You deceased not die, decide damage already decide. So the only way they could do it is the statute is clear on that. If you sell me something and I refuse to pay it, then they have a right to attach you. There's a bill, there's an invoice. There's a proof. Over here, there's no proof of anything at all. Well, no, it hasn't been heard. Right, right, right. They cannot, they cannot do, use it, but in Connecticut over here, they've been using it many times. That's to get their victim, like mm -hmm. me, uh, to extort them. Mm -hmm. After they attach you solid, then they put a pressure on you. Your yeah. own lawyer Absolutely. put a pressure on you. It's a fix. Yeah, it's, it's a fix. It's a fix to get as much money as they can. Yeah. And the lawyer, your own lawyer, share the, the oh, sure. outcome. Oh, sure. Oh, absolutely. The judge, the judge share the outcome. Absolutely. The plaintiff lawyer share the outcome. Ab absolutely. And if they are able to get 100000 from you, I'll bet you the plaintiff get what they were looking for over here, $2,800, and all the lawyer and judge and everything else. It's a ring. We the all understand The it. sheriff department, as a matter of fact, I, are getting, we're getting 10% of the extortion scheme out of it. Yeah. If so, what we're saying about this page three is that it's no good because you haven't been served with a summons. Right. And the a action has not commenced. There's no action commencing here. So, this is a phony document about a prejudgment hearing. And again, it says in here. Pursuant to the attached. Right. Yeah, person to the attached. Right. Someone complaint. And there was no attached writ. There was an attached. Uh, there was unsigned. They did not put the word unsigned. I will explain that later on on another page. They should have put the word unsigned on the writ over here. They did not. Right. Okay. There's a writ over here, mm -hmm. but but uh, a writ and uh, an order of attachment is the same thing. Right. Yep. And what is not here is this document here. Be someone to commence an action. Right. But it says over here. Now, Mr. LeBron, please tell us what this is. In this sham, all over the state of Connecticut and every state, for judges and lawyers and clerks and sheriffs and police to get in on the scam of taking away a person's property so they can have the money. Isn't this what we're talking about, Mr. LeBron? Yes, exactly. Okay, tell me what... This has to be signed by the clerk of the court. And the clerk, the clerk of the court should sign it only if all the documents are proper, if everything is there. It says over here, the proposed unsigned writ, someone, complaint, affidavit, and this order to serve, open the defendant. Right? Now, the someone was not include and the clerk of the court signed it just the same. And the, yeah. the yeah. statute read yeah. that if everything is proper, if all the documents are there and everything is all proper, then the clerk. the clerk of the court signed it. Sure, so, she probably did a million of them. Uh, right. The, that clerk of the court is involved many times, Margaret R. George. Yeah. She's involved many times doing those things over here. And uh, I won't blame her because she's got the pressure of the judge to sign the user 
to oh, sure. sign those false oh, yeah. documents. But Albert, she's probably done that a thousand times. Yes, and yes. And ripped off a thousand people. Yes, yes. In this scam. Right. In Connecticut Kangaroo Court. Okay. So is that your point on that page? Yeah, that's my point in here. Mm -hmm. You want me to read this to the people? Mm -hmm. Albert? Okay, go ahead. Read the, the, uh, the Italian. Connecticut General Statute. Section 52-278C. Uh, the clerk, upon receipt of all such documents, uh, in duplicate, if he finds them to be in proper form, shall fix a date for the hearing on the application and sign the order of hearing. So we made our point. She did not have all of the proper documents. Yes, exactly. We've made our point. Uh, and she's saying it just the same, without, and yeah. it's all arranged. It's all arranged, and you don't want to go mess an action. You don't have a claim yeah. to start with. And I say they've done this a thousand times. Yes. This is nothing new. Albert's going to show us that paragraph 16, for yeah. all injuries caused. Paragraph 6. Paragraph, thank you. By their dog, quote, unquote, their dog is their own dog. Oh, this is good, folks. They really got him on this one. If it was the defendant's dog, it should have been written his dog or defendant's dog. And so we're going to show you that. Victim Lebrun believes that this was done purposely unless someone believes that there could be lawyers that dumb and push. That's a French word. Oh. Kirsch, folks, is a French word meaning dull, stupid, obtuse. The defendant is liable to the plaintiffs for all injuries caused by their dog. Isn't that ridiculous? Under Section 22-357 of the Connecticut General Statute. Isn't that dumb? Look, the... Paragraph 7 is more dumb than that. Read paragraph 7. Okay, the whole thing? Yeah. 7. At that time and place, Plaintiff Stacy and Plaintiff Andrea had not tormented, teased, or abused the plaintiff's dog, nor had they uh, committed trespass or any other tort. This is what the plaintiff is... The plaintiff dog is their own dog. Yeah. I'm the defendant here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, gee, that's a good one, Albert. You got him on that one. The plaintiff dog is their own dog. Yep. I, I was the defendant. They were the plaintiff. So, right? Yeah, yeah. And as a matter of fact, they did an unmanded complaint after that just to change the time of the incident to match the police report. And they left the same thing again there, the plaintiff dog and their amended complaint. In the amended complaint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have here the first count of negligence as to plaintiff Stacy Floto. Well, this seems wrong to me. If this is a lawyer bringing a suit against Mr. LeBron, who is the defendant, this should read first count negligence as to defendant Albert LeBron. Albert, you told me at trial, the judge, and what was his name? Hammer. How do you spell Harry. it? Hammer. H-A-M-M-E-R? Yeah. Do you recall his first name? Harry. Harry Hammer. And in what court was it? Rockville again. The Rockville State uh, Court? Yes. Okay. You say at the trial, the judge said to you what? That uh, to help me out... He will take off the charge of negligence. Now, I was not negligent in this thing over here. But to me, the way this is written down here, I'm like Stacy Flutu admit negligence on her part. All right, so what's your comment about the judge? Was he wrong to do that? Was he right to, to do to, that? To me, he did not help me at all. It was to, uh, it was to cover themselves. Oh, up cover there. up their mistake and right, get it right, out. Right. Oh, very good, Mr. LeBron. I agree with you. As a further result of the attack and fall, plaintiff Stacy sustained a loss of earning capacity and or 
her future earning capacity has been impaired. What do you have to say about that, Mr. The Lebrun? Judge took this out, the judge took this out of there completely it, out when he read the complaint. This is paragraph 12, right, where the first count. He took this out completely when he read the complaint to the jury, right? Okay, well... To, to help me out again, I suppose. Well, what's your opinion of that? Did he help you out? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a false claim, right? The, the oh, he it, took it out to cover up their mistake. Right, right. Like because a, he realized they made right, a mistake. Right, it's a fa false claim. Gotcha. She, she's, not, she's not lost any earning capacity whatsoever. So, and Larry Flotteau swear on his affidavit, then he read the complaint, and the complaint is true and everything else. Yeah. So it's a false And it's swearing. also under penalty of perjury. Right, right. It's perjury. Uh, as a further... Uh, Consequence. Consequence of the attack and fall, plaintiff Larry, is that an E or an F? K, K, Larry K. Larry K. Floto, Floto uh, incurred expense. Thank you. Expenses on behalf of the plaintiff, Andrea, for treatment of the fear and anxiety that she sustained. Now, Mr. Lebrun, look at us. Tell us what's wrong with that. This is completely false. He never, he, he never incurred any expense at all for his daughter, Andrea. Oh. Right? Oh. And he claimed that he did. And again, on his affidavit, that he read the complaint, and everything is true. And he never showed any bill whatsoever because oh. there was none. He right? couldn't so, have produced any right, evidence. Right, right. That's a false claim again. That's why the judge took this out of there again to cover himself up. Oh, he had to correct him. Right, right, right. It's too bad the judge didn't read it before he got to court. <laughs> <laughs> the judge even says to Larry Flotteau during the trial, that if he doesn't know the answer, he doesn't have... Just say that you don't know, you don't recall, you don't remember. That's simple. Oh, the judge tell Thank him you, Judge. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Judge, for helping out the deaf plaintiff. Wherefore... The plaintiff's claim uh, to such belief in law or equity and the court. This as is, the court. Mm -hmm. This is not good light for me. Okay, folks, excuse me. Such relief in law or equity as the court may deem appropriate. Yeah, this is standard. That's it, that's it. Yeah, that's standard. That's on now, the, the end. judge. The judge took this out of there again during the trial, because if you claim equity, you equity, equity, you better come with clean hands. Oh, I see. Since oh, the so plaintiff, he, yeah. So he covered up for him again. Yeah. Since all the plaintiffs did not have clean hands over here, he took this out of so there. He took this out to he help never, out the. Uh, he never read that yeah. to the jury yeah. to cover themselves up again. Yes. Okay. And notice the big thing here: the complaint is not signed. Right. This Brian W. Prooker is the lawyer who's in this ring uh, to extort $100,000 or more from Mr. Albert Lebrun. Uh, Larry Floto was the next friend, and what's that mean, Albert? He was, he was uh, doing the lawsuit for his kid who were under age. Under age, okay, and that's what they call a next friend? Right, right. It's he should, he should have been called a guardian. He was the guardian. Yeah, of the, that's more like it. Yeah, it's not next friend. But by the same talking, where the money the man is, Larry Flotteau is not asking for any money no more. It's only Stacy, so Larry Flotteau doesn't want in case of a, a counter sue. Oh, uh, hold it, I don't get that point. What's that point? That point over here, the plaintiff now is on Stacy Flotteau. Larry Flotteau should appear here. Oh, appear, I see. Just the same. Show his name here. Oh, okay. But he does not want to be in case in case of a. So this is a nullity, right? A yeah, nullity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a nothing, right? It's a, a nothing because Larry no, Flotteau I, doesn't appear on it. Right, right. Larry Flotteau, his name should have been here too. Right? Yes, absolutely, he's because he's the guardian. He's the one who started the lawsuit. And he's the guardian. Uh, right, right. Gotcha. Right. Mr. LeBron, you have some very good defenses on this hoax action, or lack of action. Show the paragraph three. Uh, I have read the attached, unsigned complaint. 
I affirm that the allegations contained therein are true to the best of my knowledge and information. And I just want to point this out to you folks, that this is under penalty of perjury, and the man has committed perjury. The man is dead now, but he has committed perjury. This is the affidavit of Larry Floto, who is the father in this scam to extort money. Larry uh, Floto was asking for $2,820, and you said that if they wanted 100000 The affidavit should show exactly the amount that they were looking for, how they arrived at that amount. Yes. Right? So now, Larry Floto was slamming on the disc over here. That's all he should have to get. Yeah. Hey, he should not have get anything, because in the first place, this is not a lawsuit. No. Okay. Well, so they just blew it up to a hundred thousand because they would like that money, wouldn't they? Right. right, right They'd right. like to have that money in their pocket, wouldn't right, they? Right. Right. Larry Flato more than likely what they got another two thousand eight hundred and twenty-six dollar. Then the lawyer and the judge what they got the rest of it. But <laughs> they should have show in the affidavit over here. Yeah, we got your point. It should have been shown. Yeah. Uh, this is what Mr. LeBron. This is the order for the hearing. For the attachment, the attachment. For the attachment hearing. And you were you there, Mr. LeBron? Yes, I was there in court. Mm -hmm. My lawyer was there. And were you heard, Mr. LeBron? I was not heard at all. I was not put on the stand. Uh, really? Yes. And uh, really? my lawyer came there with another lawyer. They set me uh, in the court with the everybody. And the other lawyer was talking to me steady when the plaintiff was testifying. So I will not and hear what was going on. Isn't that awful? Yeah, right. now I so you were not heard at this hearing? No, I was not heard. I was not put on the stand. Right. What? And when it's...